Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be talking about the kingdom fungi. So, when we think about the kingdom fungi, we really need to remember that they are not plants. They're eukaryotes like plants, but they're definitely not plants. That's a totally different kingdom. They are made up of a cell wall with a cell wall just like plants but the cell wall in plants is different this cell wall is made of chitin that's a carbohydrate that's found in the exoskeleton of insects that's super bizarre um, for plants it's a totally different component that makes up their cell wall they're heterotrophs, plants are autotrophs, and the specific type of heterotroph they are is a decomposer we know that they break down organic matter and recycle it and then they have different numbers of cells, mostly multicellular, mushrooms, molds. There's some unicellular ones, and we've even used one in class, yeast, when we did our bread stuff. So um, just know that it's kind of a diverse kingdom, but it definitely has these key characteristics, such as has to have a nucleus, has to have these cell walls made of chin, has to be a decomposer. All right, let's talk about how they do their life stuff. Specifically, multicellular fungi are going to have a couple different important parts that we need to start knowing their, their names for them. The body of a fungi is made up of many hyphae, that's how you pronounce this word, hyphae, tangled together into a thick mass called a mycelium. This is a hyphae, right? They look like kind of, I don't know, almost like, like veins um and those are the thin filaments all right they're made of these many thin filaments when they're tangled together in a mass though we call it a mycelium um they're only one cell thick that's this stuff all right and um when we tangle them up we call it a mycelium so let's look at these examples all right we have this is tangled up to make a reproductive structure. That's mycelium. At the bottom, the hyphae are kind of just all down here. All together, we call it mycelium. All right? We're used to seeing these kind of mushroom caps, um, but not all fungi look quite like mushrooms. So how do they reproduce? Whoosh! Well, here's our basic mushroom looking fungi, all right? It has that kind of mushroom cap on top and underneath are those gill-like structures. Well, those gill-like structures can produce spores and that's sexual reproduction. Those spores are actually the gametes of the fungus and they will be coming out of the gills. Pretty crazy. Other mushrooms, they can have their hyphae accidentally break off and they can grow clones from that. And since it's clones, we consider that asexual. It is more beneficial diversity-wise for them to reproduce sexually. And again, they can do both. Uh, don't forget that fungi are heterotrophic. We know that the type of heterotroph they are is decomposers. And the way they decompose is through external digestion or absorption of their food. So they'll break down the dead organic matter, whether it's an animal or a plant, and they will release digestive enzymes that break down those compounds. And then those hyphae will absorb the nutrients. So they send out the enzyme, shoot it out, and then those broken down components will be absorbed by the hyphae. Hyphae are almost like the roots of plants. There are plenty of fungi that are on top of being decomposers. They'll be feeding and decomposing some living things too, in a way. Um, for instance, they think of these as parasites since they're harming the organism. This one is athlete's foot that harms humans. And so not only are they on the human, but the fact that they're living symbiotically and it's a harmful relationship, we call it parasitism. Here's another one, a yeast infection, right? It can be vaginal or it can be in the mouth. That is something that would look kind of like this. It's like when the Fungi, fungi's there and they're in competition with your normal natural bacteria and in order to keep balance um, they you can kind of get some antibiotics to kind of fix the situation but it just takes time usually it doesn't feel great either of these things because it's a parasite there are plenty of useful uses for 
fungi and we benefit from them in society greatly. Um, we really use fungi all the time to make our antibiotics. Penicillin, which is one of the most well-known antibiotics that is able to really fight off bacterial infections, comes from a fungus that naturally is growing in some fruits, it's like um, oranges and on bread. Okay, gross. Um, fungi also are used to make cheese. When you see blue cheese, yeah, like blue cheese that you would get on a salad. Um, that is uh, related to that penicillin back uh, fungus, and um, that is the blue component of the blue cheese that you can see on gorgonzola, etc. Um, so that blue stuff is actually the fungus's babies or spores, and you eat a lot of them when you eat your blue cheese. I don't like blue cheese for this very reason because it kind of freaks me out. Um, but there's also our unicellular yeast, and you should by now be able to tell me what yeast is used for, for food. Yeast makes bread and sometimes wine and beer, but we utilize that alcoholic fermentation and producing CO2 as a, and, um, alcohol as a byproduct for making those things. And that is what caused bread to rise or the bubbling and alcohol making in wine and beer. Last but not least, even though there are some that had parasitic relationships, there are some fungi that have mutualistic relationships. Don't forget that mutualism is a beneficial symbiotic relationship. And this particular example is called lichen. Lichen is a relationship between fungi and photosynthetic, photosynthetic organisms, specifically an algae protist, okay, and um, a bacteria. Oh, one of these things that is autotrophic that can really photosynthesize will create a relationship with the hyphae tightly packed together and they will benefit from getting energy from the photosynthetic organism because it can do photosynthesis. It's producing a lot of glucose and giving that glucose over to the fungus and the fungus is able to protect and take care of the photosynthetic organism whether it's algae or cyanobacteria pretty neat we see lichen all the time we just never knew what it looked like lichen is able to grow in really tough places whether it's on bare rock or bare trees and it usually looks kind of like this greenish grayish blue stuff that's kind of sometimes flowery we think about it is something that can live even after a big disturbance, whether natural or human cause, like a fire or a volcanic explosion. These lichens are able to grow everywhere. It's pretty miraculous. Okay, wonderful job. Let's learn more about fungi in class. See you later.